Hello chess lovers, I have a very beautiful game for you played by 10 year old Nigel Short. As you know Nigel Short was a chess prodigy and he attached significant media attention as a 10 year old by defeating Viktor Korchnoi in a simultaneous exhibition. But today we are not going to cover that game, we will cover that game later. In this game his opponent is S.J. Hooker. The game was played at 1975 Anfield Open. Hooker had white pieces and he started with e4, e6 by short, French defense, d4, d5, knight c3, bishop b4, we see that we know our variation, e5, c5, a3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, queen c7, queen g4, white is using the fact that black color bishop is exchanged and now is targeting black's king side. Knight e7, allowing this queen takes g7, black is going for poisoned point variation. Rook g8, queen takes h7 and c takes d4. Knight e2, acting against this queen takes c3 move. Knight c6, of course, queen takes e5 won't give black anything. Moreover, after c takes d4, queen d6, bishop f4, white can gain advantage. Let's go back, that's why after knight e2 we see knight c6, f4, protecting the pawn on e5, bishop d7, queen d3, d takes c3. Now, white has several choices, either to capture on c3 with a queen or with a knight. In this game, we see knight takes c3. Still, all this is a theory. a6, preventing any knight b5 moves, bishop e3. Not a good move, actually, rook b1 is better. And later, at some point, white can try to exploit the weaknesses of the dark squares. But instead, we see bishop e3, rook c8. Well, instead of playing rook c8, black had a stronger move d4. If bishop takes d4 then knight takes d4, if queen takes d4 then knight f5. And if a move like queen d3 then queen a5, pinning the knight and then the rook can come or after queen b4 black can play knight d3 coming after both the pawn on c2 and g2. Of course black pieces are more active and black has a more preferable position. But after bishop e3 we see rook c8, knight e2, knight f5, bishop d2, knight e7 and knight c3. White is wasting time, first we saw bishop e3, then bishop d2, and then knight e2, knight c3, of course, by doing all this, white is losing precious time. Now comes d4, both kicking away the knight and also freeing the d5 square for the knight. Knight e4, knight d5, rook c1 and king e7. A very strange decision by Nigel Short, actually, bishop a4 is stronger both bringing the bishop on a more active square and also putting pressure on c2 square. But instead we see king e7. Here comes c3, white is trying to somehow activate his position and a bad move by Nigel Short, knight e3. But the thing is that now white didn't use his chance and played c takes d4, which is losing on the spot. Actually, this knight e3 move is not a good move and white can gain advantage by playing c4. If knight takes f1, then king takes f1. Now, if knight e3 check, then after the exchange on e3, white can capture on e3. The knight is very active, can always find a good outpost on these squares. And of course, with two extra pawns, this is going to be winning for white. Or after king takes f1, if a move like knight b6, then this time white can play queen h3, coming after black king. If rook f8 trying to escape, then simply queen h4 check, now if f6, simply knight takes f6, and if a move like king e8, then knight d6 check, forcing black to give up the queen, it's over. But after knight e3, we see c takes d4. We have reached a critical position and now you can pause the video and try to find Nigel Short's next moves. Ready? In this position, Nigel Short, instead of moving away his queen, simply captured on c1. A very powerful queen sacrifice. We see bishop takes c1, rook takes c1 check, king f2. Now comes the light square bishop, bishop b5. 
black pieces are the lord of the position look at these knights the rook the bishop this rook queen b3 and now you can pause the video and try to find another tactical shot by nigel short ready this time nigel short played rook takes f1 removing the defender and now rook takes g2 is the threat rook takes f1 rook takes g2 check and white resigned now if king e1 then rook e2 this is a checkmate or if king f3 then bishop e2 another example of a brutal checkmate that's why seeing all this after rook takes g2 check hooker resigned a very impressive final combination i think by a 10 year old chess prodigy Thanks for watching and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave your comments. Good luck.